Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, let me tell you, I am so shocked at how much you guys are liking my book. Um, totally in shock. I did not expect this uh, kind of uh, response in a million years. I think the whole time I had it, uh, in bookstores and on Amazon, maybe a couple of years. I think I sold uh, 10 total. And my girlfriend bought two of those copies because she's just a sweet supporter of mine. She even bought one of my t-shirts. She's the one I took a picture of. I think she's single too for you uh, you guys that are out looking for a hottie patati. Anyway, she's going to kill me for saying that. But in case she's not, I didn't know. Seriously, I didn't know. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, enough joking around. I'm going to read chapter 9. As usual, I woke before everyone else. I made my special coffee and went to let the dogs out. I stood on the deck, leaning against the damp railing, waiting for Bonnie and Clyde to do their business. I hadn't really been paying any attention to the dogs till I noticed the strange way they were behaving at the pasture fence. They stood side by side, about six feet in front of the fence. They stood identically, stretching their necks as far out in front of them as their bodies would allow while keeping their feet firmly planted. It looked as though their chests were pressed up against an invisible fence and they just couldn't move any closer. There must have been an extremely enticing odor that they couldn't resist sniffing at, but at the same time they were afraid to go any closer. Just then, the back door slid open and Scott emerged, wearing only his jeans. I got up to go to the bathroom and I smelled your coffee, he said, yawning. Scott, come here and look at these dogs. What are they doing, he chuckled. I don't know. It's almost like they're afraid to go any closer. By now, they were running back and forth a short distance, but they drew close to the spot where they were sniffing at, they made sure to keep their distance. I think they can smell that man I saw last night, Scott said excitedly. I thought you said you weren't sure if it was a man or not, I asked. Well, I guess I was worried that it sounded pretty weird for a man to be standing at the backyard fence in the pouring rain. But I'm pretty sure that it was a man there, Brad. Well, let's say there was. It only took me a few seconds to look outside after you saw him, right? Where could he have gone so fast, I asked. I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. I guess he could have just ducked down behind the chicken coop, maybe. I don't know, he said, shaking his head. I looked at him and nodded. He was being sincere, and I could tell he was a little more than bothered by it. I knew beyond a doubt that he wasn't making it up. Scott wasn't that kind of person. He was as real as they came. Well, don't stress over it. It'll all come out in the wash, I said, as I pretended to throw a fake punch at his stomach. Scott turned and went down the steps to the lawn. Where are you going, I asked. I'm going to go and have a look around, see if there are any prints in the dirt. Ah, oh, that sounds like a good idea to me, and I ran to catch up with him. When we got to the spot where Scott said the guy was standing... All that was left were two great big holes filled with water. Problem was, the grass from the lawn went about two feet past the fence into the pasture. So if there was someone standing there, they could have been standing on the grass. I did notice, however, that the dogs relaxed somewhat with us there. They did venture a few steps closer, but they were still really skittish and jumpy. It looks like the dogs smell whoever it was standing there, I said, mainly to show that I did believe him. Well, I guess I should go wake up Kathy, Scott says. Are we still going school shopping for the kids, he asked. As far as I know, I answered. I'm going to be shopping for a new noodle rod and some fishing lures. Yeah, that's a great idea. Kathy wanted me to help her pick out lingerie. I like looking at the stuff but not shopping for it if you know what I mean, he said. Oh, I do, indeed. Hey, thanks for uh, letting us crash in the guest room last night. 
We were both pretty freaked out after all that commotion, Scott said. Oh, heck, Scott, that's not a problem. You know you're always welcome. You don't even need our permission. If you just need a change of pace, the room is yours, I said. Thanks, man, that's nice. Oh, yeah, he added. Are uh, Gwen and Dad coming up for the weekend for sure? Yep. They called last night after dinner and uh, confirmed. Although they may change their minds when they hear about last night. And you know Lisa will be texting her sister this morning with all the details. Scott answered with a laugh. When we got back inside, the first thing we heard was Monsters Incorporated blaring from the living room. I poked my head around the corner and saw Mandy lying on the couch as the movie had just begun to play. I reached over and turned the TV down a few notches. Hey, kiddo, you're up pretty early, I said. I'm hungry, Dad, Mandy said, stretching and yawning at the same time. Want some cereal for breakfast or some toast? I want holy toast, she said, like Mummy makes. With the butter and the peanut butter squished into the toast, I asked. She nodded while staring at the TV. Mandy sure had the cutest way about her. She preferred the strangest things. Where the older girls, her age, just barely noticed these things. Mandy was already set in her ways, I thought. I popped her toast down as Scott came into the kitchen. We're going to go upstairs and shower if that's okay. Is it okay if I steal a couple of cups of coffee? He asked, pointing to the coffee pot. Help yourself, I answered. I noticed Scott chose the two biggest mugs and drained the pot. Ah, uh, sorry, Brad. But can I say we love your coffee, he said with an embarrassed look on his face. I laughed and I shook my head. Lisa's going to kill if she doesn't have a cup for when she wakes up. And I'm going to point at you. Well, I better get the heck out of here fast, he said and left to find Kathy. I was staring out the kitchen window, waiting for the toast to pop, when the first drops of rain began to fall. It was getting darker by the minute. I was just starting to daydream about staying home and cuddling under the covers when the thunder broke my trance. I hadn't even heard the toast pop. I quickly buttered the toast and squished the peanut butter as the lightning flashed across the sky. I called Mandy to the table to eat her toast, and she asked if she could eat in the living room if she didn't make a mess. I knew Lisa wasn't too keen on the kids eating in front of the idiot box, as she calls it. But I gave in anyways. After I set her toast down in front of her on the coffee table, she continued to just lie there watching the movie, which wasn't like Mandy at all. She always woke up ravenous and had to eat within minutes, or all hell would break loose. She definitely had no patience for hunger. I sat down beside her and I felt her forehead, cool as a cucumber. What's wrong, honey? Aren't you feeling well? I asked. I'm sad, Daddy. Why are you so sad, I asked, picking her up and setting her on my knee. Sally doesn't come and see me anymore because he doesn't like you, she said. He doesn't like me, I asked, trying to keep a serious look on my face, all the while thinking, out of the mouths of babes. Her invisible friend doesn't like me. He said that you are mean to his family, Mandy said, pushing her bottom lip out to a pout. Mean to his family, I asked, realizing as I did so that I was repeating everything she said, and she nodded. Well, honey, I don't remember being mean, but I'll try really hard to be nicer, okay? Because being nice is always the best way to be, right? She nodded vigorously in agreement with my statement. As I got up to put another pot on, the phone rang. I rushed to pick it up and then realized everyone was already up. No need to be quiet. Hello, I said, answering the phone. Brad, it's Will Johansson, your neighbor. Will yelled into the phone. Wow, Jenka was right. Will really didn't use the phone much, I thought. Yes, Will, how are you? Can you and your young lad come by and give me a hand? Got a sick cow. I need some strong men to help me roll her, Will said, still yelling. Ah, yeah, sure, Will. Uh, when do you want us to come over, I asked. Can you come right away? The vet's on her way over, too, 
And if I've got the help all ready to go, then it won't cost as much. Okay, yeah, we'll be over shortly. I said goodbye and then hung up. Lisa wasn't going to be thrilled, and I imagine Kathy wouldn't be either. The school shopping had to be done. First thing on my list of priorities was to call Scott on his cell and basically tell him I agreed to bring him with me to help with the sick cow when we didn't have a clue what we were doing. I mean, I couldn't very well say no to the man. He and Rut just showed up to my place to fix my barn doors. He basically taught Lisa and I everything we knew about our animals. Scott answered his cell as Lisa came into the kitchen. She was dressed in her milking clothes. Who are you calling, she asked. I held up a finger for her to wait a second and started to tell Scott about Will's call. At first, it sounded like Scott wasn't too happy. He hemmed and hawed, and then he said, Hang on a minute, Brad. Let me talk to Kathy. I couldn't hear their whole conversation, just bits and pieces. He sounded really disappointed, and I felt bad for putting him on the spot. Just before he got back on the phone... I heard him say, I know, baby, I'm disappointed too. I started to think of excuses I could give Will for Scott not coming with me. Then Scott got back on the phone and whispered, Oh, man, I owe you large. Thank you so much, Brad. What? I thought you were disappointed, I said. Are you kidding me, Brad? When it, when it's shopping versus cow fixing? I'm going to pick a cow fixing every time, he laughed. Oh, good. I was a little worried. Can you come now? Uh, We need to get over there quickly. Yep, I'll be just a minute, Scott replied. After I hung up, Lisa said, No need to explain. I caught the gist. Do you want to cancel the shopping trip today and we'll go tomorrow? No, you guys can go and get it done. And I'll tell you what, I said, pulling her in for a kiss and a long hug. I'll even do your milking for you when we get back. Deal, I asked. Are you sure? You don't have to, she said. I know, I said. But the way I see it, the sooner you leave, the sooner you'll be back. Lisa laughed. You're crazy, but I love you so much. And that is the end of chapter nine. So I know that was a short one. So I'm going to hurry up and uh, get chapter 10 ready to roll. So hopefully by the time you guys finish this one, chapter 10 will be uploaded for you. That's just because I love (laughs) you. Okay, guys, uh, talk to you soon. Bye for now.